Hello friends. Today, I will show you how to control a relay using a LoRa module with a range of up to 15 kilometers. Here, I am using a transmitter and a receiver. The relay module is connected to the receiver device. And I have connected a button to the transmitter. I can control the relay by pressing the button on the transmitter. The same button will be used to turn on or off the relay on the receiver device. To ensure smooth communication between the both devices, the receiver constantly sends the relay status back to the transmitter at regular intervals of 3 seconds. You may notice, the LED connected to the transmitter side is continuously blinking. This LED indicates that the relay status is being received from the receiver device. This synchronization process ensures that both devices have the same relay status at the same time. This process is required to handle any data loss that may occur during the transmission. Let's have a look at the components used in this project. For the receiver device, you'll need the following components. Similarly, for the transmitter device, we'll be using the following components. You can find links to these components in the description below. To properly connect these components, you can refer this wiring diagram. The LoRa module is a 3.3 volts device, so I have powering it using the 3.3 volts pin of Arduino. And I have attached a voltage divider to the RX pin of the LoRa module to convert the 5 volts signal to 3.3 volts, which is compatible with the LoRa module. Now, let's have a look at the wiring diagram for the receiver device. Make sure to double check all the connections to prevent any damage to the hardware. Next, to simplify the setup process, I have already connected all the components to both devices using a breadboard. This provides a convenient and solder free way to establish connections, making the entire process more straightforward. By using the breadboard, you can easily modify or adjust the connections without the need for permanent soldering. Now, let's move to the coding section. Here I have two files. The first one is lorabutton.ino, which will be used to write the code for transmitter. The second file is lorarelay.ino, and it will be used to write the code for receiver device. I will start with the transmitter code. First, you will need to include the software serial library. This library enables serial communication between the Arduino and the LoRa module. The pin 2 on Arduino will act as RX pin, and the pin 3 will act as TX pin. Next, you will need to set up some important settings for the LoRa communication. The first one is the frequency band of the LoRa module. This module operates on various frequency bands, so you can choose the one that best suits your needs. Make sure the frequency will be the same on both devices. After that, you will need to define the network ID for the LoRa module, and in this case, I have set it to 7. Make sure both devices share the same network ID for communication. Now, let's define the address for this device. In our case, the address of this device is 1. It's important to note that the address of both devices must be unique and different from each other. Finally, let's specify the address of the receiver device to which the relay is connected. Now, let's move on to defining the pins for push button and the LED. Additionally, I will create a Boolean variable to store the current status of the relay. Now the first section of the code is ready. You just copy all this code and then paste it onto the receiver side. However, you need to make some changes in this code. The address of this device will be 2, and the address of the other device will be 1. Additionally, there is no need for the LED pin and button pin variables, since there is only a relay is connected to the receiver device. So, here I have defined the relay pin variable. Now let's move back to the transmitter to continue with the coding process. In the setup function, first I will initialize the serial communication with the computer for debugging the code. 
and then I will start the serial communication with the LoRa module for transmission of data. Make sure the baud rate for both devices remains the same. Then set the button pin to input pull up to sense the button press. And then set the pin mode of the LED pin to output. Next, you will need to send some commands to the LoRa module to configure its communication parameters. These commands will set the frequency band to 433 MHz, network ID to 7, and assign the address of this device to 1. Remember, it is required to configure the LoRa module before using it. Now the setup function is ready. So, copy all the code within the setup function. And then, paste it into the setup function of the receiver code. Here, you will need to make a single change. Just delete the code related to the push button and LED. Then, set the pin mode of the relay pin to output. Now, let's move back to the transmitter code to continue. In the loop function, I will use an if condition to detect the button press. This if condition is used to check the status of the button pin. And when the button pin is low, it indicates that the button is pressed. In this case, I will send the command to the receiver device to control the relay. So, first I will update the relay status variable. It will toggle between true and false. Next, I will create a command based on the relay status variable. If the relay status is true, then I will store a1 in the command variable. This command will be used to turn on the relay. Similarly, if the relay status is false, then I will store a0 in the command variable. This command will be used to turn off the relay. Next, I will start LoRa communication to transmit this command to the receiver device. So, first you will need to specify the address of the receiver device, which is 2. Then, define the number of characters you want to send. Since our command consists of just two characters, so I have set the number of characters to 2. Next, enter the actual command stored in the command variable, which will be either a 0 or a 1, depending on the relay status. The complete string will look something like this. And this string will be sent to the receiver device. Next, I will display the command variable on the serial monitor. I will also add a delay of 500 milliseconds to handle button debounce. Now the transmitter code is ready. Let's move to the receiver code. In the loop function of the receiver code, I will write the necessary code to receive the data sent from the transmitter. To listen for the incoming data, I will use a while loop that continuously checks for incoming data. And when the new data becomes available, then I will read the received data from the transmitter and store it in the data variable. Then, I will print this data on the serial monitor for analysis and debugging. Now, I will write code to control the relay based on the command in the received data. Here I have used an if condition. This if condition checks if the incoming data contain the command A1. This command indicates that the transmitter has sent the instruction to turn on the relay. So in this case, I will turn on the relay using the digital write function. Next, I will update the relay status variable to 1. It indicates that the relay is now on. Similarly, if the incoming data contains the command A0, then I will just turn off the relay. Then, I will update the relay status variable to 0. It indicates that the relay is currently off. Now the code is ready. You just select your board and COM port from the tools menu. And then upload the code to the receiver device. Similarly, you need to upload the transmitter code on the transmitter device to enable communication between the two devices. Here you can see, I am able to control the relay by pressing the push button on the transmitter device. However, 
Sometimes the button does not work at all due to data loss during transmission. This data loss can result to a mismatch in the relay status variable between the both devices. This leads to the unexpected output of the project. To handle this issue, I will use the receiver device to periodically send the current status of the relay to the transmitter. And at the transmitter side, I will update the current status of the relay based on the status received from the receiver. This approach ensures that both devices maintain the same relay status at all times. Let's implement it in the code to achieve reliable and consistent relay control between the two devices. In the loop function of the receiver side, first I will write sample code to implement the interval. Here is the sample code to execute anything at a specific interval. I have set the interval to 5 seconds, it means everything written inside this if condition will execute after every 5 seconds. So within this if condition, I will write the code to send the relay status back to the transmitter. Since we already have code for sending the relay status, I will reuse it here on the receiver's end. Now the receiver device is ready to send the relay status to the transmitter. Next, you will need to write the code for the transmitter to receive the relay status. Since we already have the code for this functionality, so I will just copy this code and paste it in the loop function of transmitter device. Here you need to make some changes. First, I will replace the relay pin with the LED pin. This LED will blink when the transmitter receives the relay status. Then, after the while loop, I will turn off the LED with a small delay of 50 milliseconds. Now the code is ready. So upload it on the transmitter device. And then upload the second code to the receiver device. Here you can see, I am able to control the relay by pressing the push button on the transmitter device. If you look at the LED which is blinking, it means the relay status is being received from the receiver. That's all for today. If you have any questions or need further clarification, feel free to comment below. See you in the next video. Bye.